Welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we will determine the expression for the coefficient of kinetic friction for the case where we have a block of mass m sliding down a ramp at constant velocity. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so the initial conditions is a mass is resting on this ramp, and while it's doing that, static frictional force cancels out the component of the weight that's going down this incline. And as you may know, the uh, static coefficient of friction is greater than the kinetic coefficient of friction. Uh, so if this angle of theta was increased enough to, uh, for this mass to break free, it would never reach a, a terminal velocity. It would just continue to accelerate. Uh, so we're going to work the case where someone has determined the angle of theta, uh, where when the block is given a nudge, that it will uh, quickly uh, attain a, a constant uh, terminal velocity. Okay, so here's the uh, cartoon of that. Okay, let's get to our example problem. So once again, we have a, a mass that's sliding down this ramp at a constant velocity. The ramp makes an angle theta with the uh, horizontal. And our goal is, again, to determine the, an expression for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, let's do a quick review of the uh, models for kinetic friction. And kinetic friction occurs when they're slipping between uh, the two surfaces. And kinetic friction acts in the opposite direction of the actual slipping. And the magnitude of kinetic friction is equal to the product of the coefficient of friction, mu sub k, and the normal force. And we're going to go through a simpler example to better uh, clarify uh, those terms. Okay, the kinetic coefficient of friction that accounts for the uh, materials of the, uh, the two surfaces and as well as things like the surface roughness. And one thing that is surprising in this model is that the actual slipping speed, or in this case, the speed that the block is sliding down the uh, ramp, uh, does not appear in the uh, frictional force. And this is attributed to uh, Coulomb's law of friction. You also note that the uh, contact or surface area between the two surfaces does not appear. And uh, this is attributed to uh, a monton. And but typically uh, this model, and it is just a model, is normally attributed to uh, Coulomb. So you normally just hear this model referred to as Coulomb's model of friction. Okay, let's look at a separate situation where we have a block that is uh, being pulled at constant velocity along a horizontal surface. If it's at a constant velocity, that means the external forces uh, cancel out. It's not accelerating. And so we can go through and uh, use a net second law in the y direction where we have the uh, weight force. And we also have the normal force. This is the, the force that the uh, surface is pushing back up on the block. And this is what we meant by the normal force and the uh, model with uh, for Coulomb's law of friction. Okay, well now we can go in the x direction and we have a frictional force. And since the block is not accelerating, again, uh, the frictional force is going to cancel out with whatever force is necessary to pull this block at a constant velocity. And this is basically the same model, the situation that we have uh, for the ramp, except that now we don't have someone pulling it and that the, uh, the motivating force to uh, have the block slide down uh, this incline is just a component of the weight uh, in that direction. Okay, first thing I want to do is select the coordinate system. I like to have the x-axis to be parallel to the uh, incline, and that means the y direction, as always, is going to be perpendicular. Let's select the uh, mass or block as the free body diagram, and uh, let's go ahead and add in the known force of weight, mg, and our normal force as shown. At this time, it's a good idea to uh, go ahead and reconcile which angles are theta. It's also probably a good idea to recognize where the 90 degree angle is. This will uh, help us to select the proper sine or cosine function when we're uh, summing up the forces. And now let's go ahead and start with applying Newton's second law in the y direction. And again, if the sum of the external forces is going to be equal to zero. And we have two forces acting in the y direction. We have a normal force, and we have a component of the uh, weight force. And so we get the equation that the weight times cosine theta is acting in the minus y direction, and the normal force is acting in the positive y direction. And that allows us to solve for the normal force in terms of the weight and cosine theta. 
And that's good because the normal force is going to be used in our frictional model, uh, which includes our unknown kinetic coefficient of friction. Now let's do a similar uh, force balance using Newton's second law in the x direction. And uh, we have the frictional force, and we have a component of the weight force in the x direction, the positive x direction. And so we get minus the weight times sine theta acting in the minus x direction plus the frictional force. In the x direction, they sum to zero. Now it allows us to solve for our frictional force. And from Coulomb's law of friction, we already have an equation for the frictional force, so we can substitute that in. And we also know we have an equation from our y direction uh, Newton's second law application. Uh, we have an equation for the normal force. And so we can bring these all together. We have one equation, one unknown. And making use of our trig functions, we get that the, uh, the kinetic coefficient of friction is equal to tangent theta. Okay, well, let's do a sanity check on this, is that this is uh, unitless. And, yep, so is our answer. And, again, keep in mind that uh, this is only valid uh, when the block is sliding at constant velocity. And that's the situation that we have, is that after the uh, ball nudges the block, it'll reach a terminal velocity and travel at constant speed, and that's only possible if someone went through the trouble and experimentally determined the angle theta for this ramp for that to, to occur. All right, well, I hope you found this uh, instructional video useful. If so, uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Have a great day.